Ne imam, dur. Evo je, nije je. Kaosno. To je eno dat s šapom. Hajde, ide pokazaj. Ok. Like so many uplifting stories, this one begins with cruelty and heartbreak. Cassie began life as an abandoned waif. Someone actually tossed her over a fence into Ann and Wally's yard. She was so small, at first Ann thought she was a rat. But right from the start, she was adopted by Moses, a wild crow with no known history of humanitarian benevolence. She trusted no one but the bird. When Cass would go in the road, she'd do everything she knew to get him out of the road. Oh, Mother Ken, that's what it sounds like. Not a crow. I called the kitten Cassie from a soap TV. And Moses, I named him Moses because of the mistakes he made. Mo the crow made sure that Cassie stayed healthy. This included feeding her. He put his feet into the ground. He took out food and put it in Cassie's mouth. We were shocked. We couldn't believe this was happening. Cassie and Moses bonded. From dusk till dawn, they were together. Take a look at this video captured by security cameras in a Bakersfield, California neighborhood. Four-year-old Jeremy Triantafilo is riding his bicycle in the family driveway when the neighbor's dog runs around a parked car and attacks the boy. But then in a split second, Jeremy's pet cat Tara races to the rescue, chasing off the dog and saving the boy. Jeremy's mother Erica checks on her son, shocked by what she just witnessed. I'd never seen a dog just shake a child like that and so violently and so I thought he had a hold of his pants. It wasn't until I got there and really saw that no, he, he had a hold of Jeremy. After making sure the dog was long gone, Tara the cat returns to Jeremy's side to check on him. Oh, come on. Come here, come here, come here, come here. I'm gonna try to catch him. What's your name? I'm Nick Shepard. Nick Edward? Shepard. Shepard. Come here. Come here, baby. Come here, Pop. I know, he was just hurt. He was just hurt. Oh no, thank you. What's your name again? Ellen Aiken. Nice to meet you, ma'am. Nick Shepard? Nick Shepard? Yep. Oh, okay. Yep. I'm going to go see if I can't catch him. No, no, I'm, I'm a dog lover. Come on. <laughs> Shit, you gotta be kidding.
Hey guys, I know this is probably not the best thing ever, but check out this video. Look where this dog did just cut out of fifth ran to. story of a dog leading a state trooper down a rural road to a burning house. Bill Hendricks was working in the shed next to his home uh, north of Anchorage, Alaska, when a spark accidentally ignited some gasoline. The shed went up in flames, and he led his German shepherd, Buddy, out and fled himself. And as he went out, he said, we got to get help. And with that, Buddy took off running. Responding to reports of a fire and lost on the windy rural back roads of Caswell Lakes, Alaskan trooper Terrence Shanigan was at a crossroads, literally about what to do. His GPS system had frozen up, and he knew that every second counted. So when he saw Buddy, the German Shepherd, approach his car, Shanigan let his dog mushing instincts take over. On this particular day, uh, there was just some connection. And Buddy was able to connect with me. Um, and there was a gut feeling, this intuition to follow the dog. He was giving me a lot of cues, looking back over his shoulder, loping, would kind of turn a little bit, wanting me to speed up. And once I got there, I knew I just had that feeling. When the dog came around, and Buddy actually greeted me at my driver's side door, nudged me with his nose towards the house. It was, it was just surreal for that brief moment. And they told me that one of the dogs was unaccounted for. I asked him if it was a German Shepherd. And when uh, they described him to me, that's when we realized that it wasn't been Buddy. That For seven days, we followed Timber's progress, desperately hoping one of the other cows would adopt him and allow him to suckle. Sadly, this didn't happen. You can definitely see this calf is hungry. Um, there's even suckling attempts at other elephant. Like just now, I tried to suckle from one of the sub-adult bulls there. We were faced with a difficult decision. Let nature take its course and allow this youngster to die a slow, cruel death or intervene and give him a second chance at life. As a vet, it was an easy decision for Johan. He couldn't stand by and watch an animal suffer. At 
first light the next morning, we darted timber. It seems we got to him just in time. He was so weak, it took just seconds for him to succumb to the tranquilizer. A sure sign he was just days, possibly hours from death. Probably to get the vehicle here because it's, uh, it's quite difficult to ride. Whoa. It's still a little calf like this, is heavy to pick up. We must hurry up, eh? We decided to take him back to the Shamwari Animal Hospital so that Johan could monitor him constantly and give him 24-hour vet care. Now that was an unusual road trip. The biggest challenge was keeping him cool, and we were inventing all sorts of devices to do just that. Some were more effective than others. Trunk down there. You can see he quite like this. He's coming actually towards this water now. Eight hours later, Temba arrived safely at Shamwari. It was quite a long trip and it was really, really hot this last, last two or three hours in the road. Unfortunately, we had to sedate him a little bit at the end because he was almost breaking the truck down. Temba was very scared. He was no, charging no, everyone. No. No charging. No. This is a natural reaction for a frightened elephant. No, don't charge. He was only trying to establish dominance. No. We knew that no. if we were going to be no. able to help him, no. the first no. lesson we had to teach him was the word no. Push him back. Just push him back if he does that. You've got to show him that you're not scared and that you're the boss, or he's going to be charging everybody. And that's a really bad habit with a baby elephant. In the process, we did our best not to get squashed. He definitely likes Carla. He really does. No, he gave Carla, Carla! But listen, that's a really good lesson to learn now, Carla. Yeah. Yeah. He is really strong. Don't put yourself in a position where he can get you to there. Okay. Okay? A little bit. Our next challenge was getting him to drink milk. Come on. For days he refused. Come on, boy. Yes, come on. Come on, boy. Yes. Yes, good boy. Oh my god. I was drinking it. Good boy. That's amazing, huh? Eh? <laughs> he's really drinking it. Oh my gosh, I can't believe he's drinking it. Good boy. Finally, we found the right formula. This is really, really good, eh? Our little boy would only drink the most expensive milk on the market. Boy, he's getting the very, very last little bit out of it. We also needed to get Temba a playmate. And that's where Albert the Sheep enters the story. It was a bit of a tense meeting at first. But it wasn't long before they became firm friends. Finally, Temba had a playmate his own size he was allowed to push around. And yes, Albert does push Timber back as well. I can't believe how easily he's taken to following us. I mean, I know we've done all the bonding with him in the enclosure, but this is incredible. It's just assuring all the time, right? Eh? Yeah, rubbing up against yeah. you. Within 10 days, Timber trusted oh. us enough so that we could start taking wow. him into the bush for walks. He was more than happy to follow. And you have to see this video to believe it. What first looks like a lion about to attack is actually an African lion bonding with its rescuer with a hug and a kiss. This heartwarming footage comes to us from an animal sanctuary in Colombia. Hello. Yeah, sorry. That he doesn't have so much time to. Thank <laughs> you. 
No way, John. No way. Tell me what you're feeling now, John. The silverback is just behind you. He sat, he sat a meter behind you. And there are three babies squashed between him and you. <laughs> Females just behind you to your right. I just feel like one of the gang. Look at this little one. I can hear it it's touching your hair. Bit of pre it's, it's actually grooming. Here comes a female. It's that black, that black shirt of yours, and the silverback. Now the little one's climbing up to get a closer look at your hair. He's on the, his back. Got that piece that stick out of there, just pull the stick out. Coming forward with the, they're the, the lips, the lips. <laughs> just watch your glasses. I don't think they're going to be that interested in them. <laughs> Silverback. There's a baby on the mom's breast.
everything was fine, and then no warning, he just like attacked you, meant business. He can be such a love and a sweetheart, but then you just don't know what can, what can happen. Last trip to the Gabon, I wanted to go and see Queeby. We can't find him. We can't find him. <laughs> Um, when did you go see him? I hadn't seen him for five years. I was with Liz Pearson, who's the head of our guerrilla project there. Liz was very concerned who he had attacked the last two people that had come across him. No stranger has been with them for years. But I was really determined to see him. I got in the boat with my brother and we went up and down the river for several hours. And I had this call for the guerrillas. Come on! Come on then! Come on! Come on! And I was calling him, turned around the corner, and there was this magnificent, now 10-year-old gorilla. And, you know, he hadn't seen me for five years, but he'd heard my voice, and he, and he came to the edge of the river. Moss, explain to them to throw food if it kicks off. Mais ça, moi aussi, c'est chaud. And as I sort of clambered over the top, I was a little concerned. <laughs> but the moment I heard this deep love, rumbling gurgle, I knew then that I was okay. He looked in my eyes with such intensity and such love, and it was an incredible experience. And we just sat there together, sort of drunk on each other. He embraced me like a long lost friend, and it was just beautiful. And he slowly introduced his wives who came to see me. Sleeping bag. Yeah. I'm right now. I'm going to get out of here. And he wouldn't let me go. He scrambled off to get some raisins, and I managed to clamber back in the boat. To my amazement, he then followed the boat all the way back to our camp. And on the other side of the river, he then nested his family, directly opposite where I sleep. And all night long, he hooted and called him for his family. At six o'clock in the morning, I got up and went for a swim in the river. And, you know, there he appeared, on the edge of the river. Freebie, he's a lovely boy. I can see you. Just shows what a remarkable animal these gorillas are and what a remarkable animal. I can honestly say it was one of the greatest experiences of my life.